uh, special DPW Public Works meeting to order. Um, first thing we need is a motion to approve the prior minutes of the, or the approve the minutes of the prior committee meeting. Is that uh, Supervisor Hogan to raise your hand? Sure. Move it. <laughs> Supervisor Loeb, second it. Any discussion on deletions, additions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, before we start, I just want to uh, recognize Supervisor Lucia is here, and if you want to go down the line, just introduce Ed. <laughs> Ed Burns, Deputy Supervisor, Tom Corp. Jack I'm, Kelly. I'm Jack Kelly, consultant here today representing United Rail. Okay, thank you. I want everybody to know who was here. <laughs> okay, um, so at the last committee meeting, um, it was uh, decided that we were going to send out the uh, send out the uh, proposal that was submitted on behalf of United Rail, and um, I believe everybody's received it and had time to um, digest it, go through it. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? Try and get situated here. A lot of paper. I believe um, everybody was asked if they had questions, they could submit them to the county administrator, which I don't believe we I received any. Didn't get any. Okay. So, excuse me? I missed that part. Sorry, but that was supposed to be the question part. <coughs> okay. So, if we pick up where we left off last month, um, now the committee's had time to review the uh, proposal. Um, I would guess that there's probably questions or uh, Supervisor Lowe. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we get into mm -hmm. the uh, discussion of United Rail, I would like us to, I would like the county to in detail find out what our liabilities would be if under different scenarios if we abandoned the line just so that we have that on the table and it's all part of our decision process we hear about the fact that we receive money to support the railroad we might have to pay some back but it's only conjecture we need to we and we should be able to now that it's 2019 exactly what how much money it would be liable <coughs> for what the time frame would be and any expenses just lay it all out what our liabilities would be if United Rail wasn't involved at all and then we get that on the table that's there and then we can concentrate on United Rail do both at the same time okay so we'll start with uh, Mary on the uh, liability on the previous grants and yep. uh, so first I can and then we'll okay. go into Kevin I can speak to the grants. Back when we first started this whole process, we checked with the state and the federal <coughs> government um, to see if we would have to pay back any of the grants, and we do not. We're past the time frame. We kept the railroad long enough and operated it long enough where the grants are free and clear. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> so the next part of your question was the other liability, which to abandon it. Which, well, you. That wasn't actually part of the question. I thought it was. So you don't want operating cost or ma ownership cost of the railroad? Did you well, want to know? We're not going to just, we could sit there and let it sit there for 10 years and just throw money at it. But So you didn't want to know that? Other than that, so either we're going to do something with it railroad-wise or do something something with it recreational-wise <coughs> or we're going to close it down. Well, that will cost to close it down. That's, that's the cost I'm looking for. I guess it's still your question. You may not have the answer right now. I, and, I, and I don't have that answer <coughs> for a cost to close it down. As you said, I mean, I'll let Ryan talk to the abandonment. Uh, I, I'm not sure, and I'll, again, I'll let him talk to it, that we can we can abandon our, our portion right now, uh, especially if there's a, a possibility of Tahas or something coming out of Tahas. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but the cost to abandon it, I, I don't know what that is. I know the cost to maintain it every year is, but the cost to abandon it, I don't. Right, Mr. Chairman, I knew you wouldn't necessarily. No, I'm, I think that's something we need to get all out the papers so that we don't keep yeah. talking about it. Okay, I'm going to have Ryan step in and answer the rest of that. Yeah, I, I, I can clarify uh, 
what abandonment entails and what it means. Uh, I've been talking with the Surface Transportation Board as well as State DOT about this. Uh, abandonment, at the end of the day, uh, it's about whether or not the federal right-of-way over the corridor uh, remains. Uh, when it's abandoned, there's no more federal right-of-way. There's no more, you know, there's no more uh, uh, regulated train service. That doesn't mean you can't still have uh, a passenger train. There's, uh, I have a figure here, I think it was a, a, a do one dozen to two dozen uh, situations around the country right now where a passenger train is operating on abandoned right-of-way, two dozen, uh, that according to the STB. Um, so I if it's abandoned, that, that may be a possibility. Um, when uh, you have abandoned railway, now we own it as real estate. We don't own it as a railroad corridor. The real estate is real estate. That's the way the Surface Transportation Board put it. Um, I believe, uh, and we'll need to research just to be sure, I believe we own all the right-of-way and fee, uh, that there's no reversionary uh, rights uh, to former property owners in there. I if there is, that's a problem because, uh, you know, let's say you have a parcel or two in the middle of our track that reverts to the prior owner. Now you've got a gap where we're going to have to pay for the right-of-way for a snowmobile trail or, or, a, or a rail trail or uh, if, if we wanted to run some kind of tourist train like they do in a couple of dozen places, now we've got to pay for the right-of-way. So that's a peril of abandonment uh, where we will need to figure out exactly what's going to happen with the uh, real estate when abandonment is final. However, the initiating abandonment could go in a couple of directions. One, uh, if we initiate abandonment uh, the way that the state DEC has done, it opens, as we know, because we thought about uh, getting involved in that process to, uh, to protest the abandonment of the Sanford Lake Line, it gives um, governments, shippers, uh, rail companies that might use the line the opportunity to challenge the abandonment. Uh, the Surface Transportation Board might agree with those challenges and not allow the abandonment to proceed further. Uh, what happens is uh, so it's a process called OFA, Offer for, for Financial Assistance, where if there's uh, basically, and again, this is in the words of the Surface Transportation Board, the rail business is use it or lose it. You, it, you can't just keep these corridors in service without somebody that eventually is willing to put up some money and run trains on it. So the OFA process is the Surface Transportation Board's mechanism to try to make a deal happen between the owner of a railroad and someone that wants to operate on it uh, when the owner of the railroad doesn't necessarily want to be in the railroad business anymore because it's costly. What the OFA would do is uh, help us negotiate for either a purchase or for a subsidized operating agreement where uh, a company will come in for a period of time, two or three years, and uh, they will essentially pick up the operating cost so that the county is not running red ink on the railroad. If we're unable to negotiate an agreement, then the STB has the authority to impose an agreement. What they could do is they'll do an over-the-fence appraisal, which is the value of the land and the value of the ties, uh, the value of the tracks, and they will say to an operator, here's the price. Are you willing to pay the price? If the operator is willing to pay the price, it gets sold uh, uh, without, you know, we, we don't have the ability to object to that if it gets to that stage. So somebody will buy that line uh, through the uh, OFA process. Or uh, the STB can impose uh, a subsidy agreement. I asked them, well, would it ever be the case that you would impose an agreement that would continue to have us, you know, running in the red where we don't want to be? Uh, they said that they wouldn't do that, that it's not their practice to force somebody to stay in the railroad business that doesn't want to be in the railroad business. So it's unlikely that we would get, um, you know, a, a deal that, we, that just didn't work for us. They, they'd work with us. I, I felt very confident in talking to, it was the Office of Rail Customer and Public Assistance that I talked to. I'm in touch with the Deputy Director. They'll be a, a partner with us in whatever we want to do. They'll help us figure it out. Um, so I outlined how uh, initiating uh, an abandonment procedure could lead to a ruling essentially that we stay in the business. Um, there's also a way that um, uh, 
it could lead to rail banking. You know, if there's a state agency, if there's a private uh, group uh, that wants to help the county uh, turn its 40 miles into a strictly recreational use, um, or if there, the county has the you know, thought to, as I said, the couple of dozen um, tourist trains that are running on abandoned railroad, the way to do that is through rail banking. Uh, essentially, the, the abandonment would not go forward. The uh, federal government would retain its right of way uh, for the uh, railroad to continue operating uh, uh, if it needed to operate. Uh, we would be free to do what we wanted to do on the line. Uh, I suppose we could tear up uh, uh, tracks if, uh, if we're past that 10 years. Uh, we'd have to make absolutely sure we can do that if the time ever comes that we would want to do that. Uh, and perhaps partnering with a state agency again or, or a different organization. But um, I guess if there's a risk to that, it's that even if you tear up those tracks, if there's ever a rail need on the corridor, people can just come and put them back down. Uh, that's the point of not going through with the abandonment and retaining the federal right of way. So that's sort of a thumbnail sketch of what the options are going forward. Um, and what some of the risks are related to those options. Uh, I guess the other option that we have at this point, well, I don't guess, I know the other option that we have at this point is we have the ability to negotiate with uh, United uh, to see if they want to uh, be a carrier on our line as they've uh, outlined and whether that works for us. Um, or we could uh, watch and see what the, the, the mine wants to do. Perhaps the mine wants to work with United Rail. Uh, perhaps the mine has other carriers in mind that they are interested in working with. Uh, but I would just caution that the, the longer we wait on that, the more money that we're bleeding away. Mr. Molino, Supervisor Molino. You know, I'm, I'm you know, you're going to hear it from me. I mean, I don't understand why we're even having this meeting. We have a company that wants to do it. We have a town in another county that we have to help because if we abandon our part, their, their part is useless. Um, we lost our airport because we messed around so long. We can't keep going backwards. The old company gave us six, over 600000 if I'm not mistaken, in the six years he was here. It didn't cost us a dime in the time they're here. They took care of the insurance. They took care of the maintenance. They took care of everything. They're gone. We have another company wants to come in. How much does it cost us this year already? Probably around 50000 to five months, okay? So it's costing us money. Why are we talking about abandonment when we have a company that wants to come in and take care of it? If they don't succeed in two, three, five years, then maybe that we can go to that option because now we know nobody can make money on that rail. But right now, we should be moving forward. It's June. If you want these guys to get running and have a, a fall season and maybe a little winter season, <coughs> They got to know now, and we can't wait another month. And that's my opinion, and that, and I'll stick to it. Supervisor Hogan, had her hand up. Oh, it got earlier. answered. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Loeb. In fact, the chairman, I agree completely with Supervisor Loeb. Uh, all I, what I'm asking for is that we put a folder together, we outline everything that you just said, Ryan, with the cost if we have to hire somebody for a couple thousand dollars to put it, so that we have it in a file. And then we don't have to keep asking this question every six months or a year. And we can concentrate on other things. But we'll have those answers, which will eventually happen, but we'll have them in a file, solid. Supervisor Hogan? I believe at the last meeting we had asked the United Rail to come back with some answers to questions. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What are you saying? He had asked. No? You guys I don't believe we had any questions because there were several members that hadn't seen the proposal. Relative to no, the, maintenance? There were, there, well, uh, yeah, w last meeting we asked about mm -hmm. their willingness to uh, have a capital expenditure mm -hmm. program to make sure that the uh, rail line is up to snuff and that it stays up to snuff for what they want to do on it. Now, the United Rail did tour the rail line on, I believe they went out on a high rail with uh, Tim Benway uh, last week, uh, Thursday. 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 Uh, the, we, we could ask uh, what their impressions were and whether whether that changes their view or 
But other than that, I didn't receive any questions. We, 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 have, we have members of this firm that have to travel across the country. Uh, I'm not going to have them travel here for, for nothing. I could, answer, I could give you a brief answer on what we found on the high road. I mean, we feel that... Could you go to my shirt? We feel that it's a strong class two railroad. There's, uh, there's obviously things that need to be done. Um, we have some uh, beaver pond issues that have to be corrected right away. Um, we do need to do some ditching over the next two or three years and probably a small safety tie uh, program as well as fixing some plugs that were put in by the previous operator that uh, was done improperly. Right now we're waiting for the results of a gentleman from TRAC, T-R-A-C, which is a rail engineering firm, uh, was with us. We brought him down to, for this, uh, specifically to take a look at uh, the track and tell us what he thinks a good solid program would be for the next two or three years. The biggest issue we found, and I, it's well known to you folks, is the, the Hadley Bridge is going to have to be redecked. Now, um, whether you do it in one year or three years or four years, that's, that's another thing. I do know that uh, DOT is going to have a rail program this year. That should be coming out in the middle of June, if not the end of July, or I'm sorry, the end of June. And we could apply for that grant, for a grant to redeck the bridge. And that, that um, grant program is generally every year, every year, so if you did part, part this year, part the next year, whatever. It, the deck is the deck is good enough to last us for another year or two, but over over the you know in the long run you're going to have to deck it. And even if even if you were going to do rail to trails that sort of thing, you're going to have to deck that bridge. <laughs> you're just not going to run over it the way it is. That's it. Oh, sit down. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Lope. What? I just said. Uh, I don't want it to have to go up and down, up and down. So oh, okay. I could use the exercise. <coughs> Supervisor Loeb. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I may, uh, did you say or imply or say directly that through the grant process you would cover all the expense of redecking the bridge? I didn't say that. I didn't mean to imply that, but it's one thing we could talk about and negotiate. Uh, it's an 80-20 program, so 80% would be a grant from the state of New York, 20, the balance of it, 20% would be uh, local sources. Do you have uh, an estimate of what that would cost, the 20%? I believe, I, I heard a number like a, a, a million dollars to, to deck the bridge. Yeah, about a million, a million four, somewhere and, in the And so we'd have to come up with $200,000, wow. right? That would either be you, or, or a combination. Right. The other thing is we could stretch it out over time as well. We could do it, you know, one part this, the, you know, the next coming year, the next part the next year, whatever. But it's got to be done. Um, I asked the question, Tim was there as well, I asked the question of whether we just put every other, every other timber in and it was recommended by the engineer that we were with that uh, instead of you doing it like one timber every other timber, you would you would essentially do it as a panel. So you'd do a chunk today, then a chunk the next next year, and a chunk the third year, and finish it off. But I think there's sufficient. If you guys have a bridge a bridge report, that would be sufficient for the, you know, an engineering report like that would be sufficient to help start the start the uh, application when that comes. And I did see I did see P's grant writing for them for years, so I could, I could certainly put it in writing the grant. Another question? Go ahead. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the financials, and you have a page of equipment that you own, or I'm not sure if own is the correct word, because it's not that it shows up in your asset, your balance sheet. That equipment list came from the Plymouth and Lincoln, which is a railroad we're in the process of purchasing. Should have that closing by the end of the year, or I'm sorry, by the end of June. So we're we're in contract with them. 
Do you own any equipment at this? We do own equipment that's out in the, out in the west. And if we not on your balance sheet. Not on our balance sheet. I can't speak to that. I don't do the balance. I, I don't do the balance sheet. Uh, I can find. I can. I can. The locomotive is a major asset. Right. I can find the answer to that question for you, but I don't have that off the tip of my tongue. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Diamond had his hand up. Yeah, just one question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So <clears throat> let me understand that that Warren County owns rail in Saratoga County. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Basically, from the is it the Hadley Bridge in, in yeah, Saratoga County? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it is. you're right. Mr. Chairman, for purposes of the record, my name is Jack Kelly, and uh, I appreciate being here today. And that was a very good question. Uh, basically, just south of Antone Mountain, uh, which is uh, Antone Mountain Road, which is in the town of Corinth. From there, north to the Warren County line, that is uh, mileage that is owned by Warren County, but it's in Saratoga County. Uh, basically, the towns of Corinth and town of Hadley. And Kim, do you know the, what the mileage is for that portion that's within Saratoga County? I believe it's only seven miles before yeah, we switch to you. And the from Saratoga Springs to the s southern boundary of Antone Mountain is uh, 16 point some odd miles that the town of Corinth owns. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Uh, in your finances, in your business plan, it talks about <coughs> leasing the track and additional revenues. And those additional revenues are based upon area of the track location um, that whether it's Corinth or whether it's Warren County is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, when we learned of this meeting we did have our uh, executive vice president contact the county and we did offer to have our executives here to answer specifically those okay. financial questions. Uh, Mr. Fisk is uh, appropriate to answer rail operating questions, and I'm appropriate to talk about the uh, the grant and general questions. But that's a question that we would be happy to to answer uh, if need be. Uh, if, if it's such that we could put a few of those together, we could even go so <coughs> far as to have a telephone conference call or we do look forward to coming down. We, we've packaged a nice little presentation with video and stuff like that that we really would like to show to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Supervisor McGowan. And um, yeah, if you, uh, you have down here, um, uh, responsible for normal maintenance only, uh, does not include any um, capital e e expenditures in your program and uh, you know you're talking grants of the 80-20 uh, you know m my concern is uh, you know if we get in and we in we don't really know I mean you take one tour and I'm not sure how that goes I mean on the high rail but you know you take one tour what happens if you find out that you know there there's more I mean I'm, I'm looking at the uh, you know your your that your financials and I, I have concerns with uh, the money allocated for any um, problem that might come or, you know occur uh, at the time um, and you're kind of vague and responsible for just the normal maintenance uh, on the track and I, I wanted to know about uh, you know the utilities the herbicides and you know and all the environmental compliance I am familiar with the uh, the Lincoln um, line up there. Just uh, I happen to be born in Littleton, and my family lives just down the road. And I most winters I'm on that, and and I do take my bike over the Kank all the time. So uh, we've been to the top of the Mount Washington, so I know the area and I know the line. So uh, I also see a lot of the uh, the assets you had. Um, uh, 
I didn't see any of the assets, but I did see and and, and hear of uh, you know the, the other cars that you have, and we can talk about that later on. But my main concern really is the the financial stability on taking this line, and then finding out is a little bit more. You you bit off a little bit more than you can chew, and we're kind of back in the same situation we, we were with the last person. So. I think that's a good observation and a very good question. Uh, the overall uh, business plan for United Rail is to undertake uh, several purchases or acquisitions of rail lines over the next year. Uh, that's for the short term and then the long term is to continue to add to that amount. Um, and again, I, I know certain information, but because this is a public company, uh, I'm not here advised with with our lawyers as to what I can talk about without it being too forward-looking comments, except to take and say that uh, Steve and I, being local people, uh, I know for myself, I would not have placed my name associated with this entity uh, if I thought that it was not going to succeed. I've had too good of a career to have one project take and uh, you know, undermine that. So. I appreciate your observation. I disagree with it. And we can take and have our executives here or available to talk specifically about those items. Um, you did have a observation. We're talking about certain things to be done by the, uh, uh, that need to be done to the train. I'd like to ask Steve with the Mr. Chairman's permission to talk about what in this industry is considered uh, normal operating type maintenance and what would be a capital expenditure and you'll recall at the last meeting I did say that our president has asked Steve to prepare a capex budget specifically for this this line and that was the reason that we went out spent quite a interesting day uh, and I if you haven't ever done it I'd highly recommend that you all go out for a high rail uh, on this line uh, just have somebody go out and cut the trees beforehand well, um, I think the way that's worded in, in uh, response to the RFP is on the CapEx versus normal maintenance. Tie replacement, uh, ditching, weed spraying, those are all things that the railroad will do, you know, as a matter of course. And I think what why it was worded there as CapEx is generally um, for bridges for something like this that we have to redeck that bridge. That's a big item that we need to talk to because if we have a five-year agreement with you and we spend a million dollars and make a, uh, you know, make a $30 or 30-year asset out of it, we need to partner with you as opposed to dump a million dollar uh, burden on top of the railroad that's trying to operate it for with a five-year agreement for, with you. you know, mostly, um, if we wanted to put a siding in, that would be on us. If we wanted to put a new switch in, that would be on us. You know, we. But the big ticket items that you worry about is is things like the bridge, and a, and a big culvert, something of that nature. Mr. Morgan, culvert. Sorry. I, I, I do have a couple of questions for Steve. First of all, you're a railroad guy. If I misrepresented anything in my uh, uh, comments earlier, or, or was that accurate to your? That was really accurate. You did a great okay. job. Okay. The one thing, the one thing, um, when you abandon something, what you're doing is you're asking permission to give up your certificate of, of um, you know, your freight obligation, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you you have a freight obligation. As soon as you abandon, as soon as you get permission to abandon it, you can do anything you want with that railroad. But if you if you keep the the freight operating rights, then anybody could locate on that line, you know, say all the way up the end of North Creek. With, with one car a year and force you to maintain that whole line for forever until they say we don't have we you know only ship one car a year mm -hmm. that's why you give up and that's why you don't tear up the line before you get that abandonment and that's why when you do get that official abandonment then you can do whatever you want with the line 
My other question, thank you. Uh, my other question is uh, the county terminated with um, Iowa Pacific last June, but I believe uh, as a technical matter in the Surface Transportation Board's eyes uh, he, that they are still the carrier and that there would have to be a discontinuance uh, procedure uh, which may, may involve a, a financial transaction with any company that wants to come in as a new carrier. Is that your view of how that would go down? They, they would have to transfer that you know that operating certificate to us would that require the uh, Iowa Pacific's cooperation yeah we know we know those we know the Iowa Pacific people okay we, can, we I don't think that they try to hold us up by saying you know give us a hundred thousand dollars we'll give you the certificate I don't think that's going to happen hey, supervisor wild um, let Mr. Kelly go for a second thank you um, for your information, one of the members of our board of directors is uh, just recently the past chairman of the Surface Transportation Board, and uh, we have been using his services to date. And uh, if we do proceed forth, then this becomes a question and issue. Um, you know, I don't know anyone that's probably more qualified to address these issues than the former chairman, and he would be available to work with us and to work with the county to make sure it's all done correctly. Okay, Supervisor Wild. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, I believe that the rail line is an asset for the county, uh, but what, as I looked through your proposal, I was totally confused in terms of uh, who is going to be responsible for the maintenance and the capital improvements. And one of the things that stood out with me, uh, and thank you, Mr. Moore, for the comparison that you did, but um, there was another entity who was considering um, working on this line with us. And their proposal included a CapEx program, a five-year CapEx program of over $5 million. So I, I need to um, kind of rectify the fact that is it a million dollars, is it $5 million, because it's truly $5 million. It exceeds the total revenue, uh, maybe it's more than the revenue, it exceeds the, the profit margin that your company is projecting over those five years. So you'll be working in a negative in dealing with the capital expenditures and, and the revenue that you have. So what I'm, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm trying to look at understanding uh, the financials as Supervisor McGowan mentioned, and who's gonna be responsible for what? Right now, based on the proposal that I saw, it looks like the county is gonna be obligated to be responsible for a significant portion of that. And then we'll have the decision to make whether or not this asset is worth that expenditure, or whether it's worthwhile to consider the abandonment. So I guess I'm looking for some more clarification from your team on this. Right. Well, we didn't have the luxury of high railing, high railing the line before we responded to the RFP. Uh, clearly, we didn't we didn't get that far last last week. But um, we we believe that if if somebody said that it's going to cost them five million dollars over five years, I'd, I'd be really surprised if it's that much, that kind of money. And I wouldn't use that number, though those are people who aren't part of the process anymore, and there may be reasons why they're not, um, but that's totally not an accurate And Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, it could be because of the fact that it was a $5 million number, and it was hard to rectify that. Well, I don't even, I don't know, does, do you, uh, not having read their I know, response, you guys haven't been there. So that's that's, that's what I'm looking for, is before we can make a decision to go forward with this, we need to understand what the obligations right. are for both organizations, the county as well I as your team. What we're really looking for and kind of getting a feeling here today is some of those kinds of questions that most of you have been asking are really items that are subject to negotiations and a creative approach. And I think that the sooner that we could be declared a preferred uh, entity and we bring our uh, executives in here to sit down and I'll lock the door and we'll have an agreement before we leave. So, uh, but those are good questions and I, I'd i like to have answers to some of those things myself. But, but they're subject to negotiation. The, the one thing I would ask you is do you know if that, that $5 million estimate included the, the Sanford Lake branch? Because I, I, five million have, I have no idea. I'm just looking for the branch. information that was presented to me right. um, and us as a committee. Um, 
So I, it's just one of those questions that's popped up in my mind as we move forward. The, so, the the answer is no. The uh, it was a if you add it all up, it was a more of, it was a fifteen million dollar program which included a two eighty six k conversion, which would allow uh, cars to run uh, with the maximum allowable freight. Um, so, and that was all in relation to the uh, 40 miles that Warren County owns plus the 16 miles that Corinth owns, no Sanford Lake. But that would allow you to run 286,000 pounds for the rock out of Sanford Lake. Right. So, uh, a, just a point of information for the committee to also have is the county, the one thing that we do know, um, is what our annual track maintenance costs are, what range as it, and it's three to five hundred thousand dollars a year to uh, keep it up to the FRA standards for a class two track. That's the starting point of our maintenance. And I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, at the last meeting, I requested a copy of that documentation so we can have it for you. want to? You can have the sheet, but I mean, yeah, I think you want to. Uh, yeah, you correct me if I'm wrong. You want this is just a sheet that sort of lays out what we do on an annual basis. I think you wanted a little more detail, but I, yeah, I yeah. think as much detail as you got. Also, we've learned since then that there is a uh, bridging culvert report that had been put together. Uh, anything that can help us to be able to get a handle on what ongoing expenses would be and have been, uh, so that we can come back and adequately be very truthful and open. Uh, as to what can and cannot happen. Uh, you know, I find it very interesting with that last observation that, you know, they had put together CapEx budgets, et cetera, based on, I think it was just great. There's no great on the line right now. So last time I knew 100% of nothing was nothing. So that's the whole theory of why we're starting off with an excursion so we can get that cash flow moving. You know, cash flow is king anytime you're running the business, especially on startup. Two hours a while, did you have a follow-up question? Just one more, you know, Mr. Chairman, I'm thinking that uh, based on what I've heard, I'd, I'd like to uh, bring forward a motion to say that we uh, we try to post haste start negotiations with this organization to see if it makes sense to move forward. There's a motion on the floor. Uh, I'll second it. Okay, seconded by Supervisor Dixon. Discussion, I know Supervisor Wild had a or uh, McGowan had its hand up previous to that question. Did you have something you wanted to ask? Brett? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, your, main, your, your main business is uh, basically passenger tourism um, type rails. The business plan that we're putting forth here is showing that we will be making a profit and be successful uh, by running an excursion operation. Um, for your information, we feel it's very important that we take and utilize the thousands of tourists that come into Saratoga Springs not only during uh, July and August, but also they have a large convention business the rest of the year. It's also important for us to tap into the Lake George and Warrensburg market uh, which means very with the people that come in and maybe are looking for another day operation. Uh, we do plan to ramp up using specifically the International Paper Company former site in Corinth. Also, uh, Steve here has has a experience of developing the onesies and twosies, which I think we talked about previously, the rest of the line. And yes, we do have an interest eventually running freight to the Taha's mine. Uh, but that is a, another challenge in and of itself. And we are, in turn, being responsible parties this week, meeting with the people that we will get uh, further discussions going. And we'll be able to share that when we do sit in our negotiations with them. If I, if I, if I could add something to what Jack was saying. We believe that the bread and butter of this line for now, for the immediate future, is, is the tourism aspect of it. The, the, 
you know, daily trains, the special trains like Thomas the Tank Train, um, the Hogwarts Train, those sorts of things. We intend to run those, and those are going to be, I think, they're going to be a, a good shot in the arm as well. But that's the foundation. That's what's going to allow you to get the onesie twosies as far as freight's concerned. And there's there's things that we could move up and down that track today. You know, should we uh, be fortunate to get the business with the rock salt? There's a there's a you know, right now I think a lot of you guys get your salt. It comes into Fort Ann and gets trucked up into the mountains from Fort Ann. And maybe American Rock Salt wants to put a put a, a pile up the, in the North Creek area and distribute it out of there. You know, anything that will get a truck off the road out of the Adirondacks is the kind of business we would really be going after. Now, you know, when it comes to Tahaws, everybody says, you know, the previous owner tried to move that rock down to Long Island. That's not where that rock wants to go. I mean, you just can't compete down to Long Island. Join a Galusha has tried it for years out of their own mind and tried to move it to Long Island to a facility that actually one of the owners is part owner of and they still couldn't compete with uh, an operation called Tilcon out of Connecticut because as soon as you bring as soon as you bring your your rock down there the first thing they do is they drop their price of rock to nothing but where I think the rock can go is you know from a high friction aggregate I think it could go to Pennsylvania I think there's room there. I think there's a, there's a shortage of high friction aggregate in Massachusetts. Some place other than an extremely expensive location to get to, which is Long Island. Um, is there, is there um, uses for that sand? Oh, you bet. There are uses. And every, as every day that goes by, as, as you know, we become more aware of what we can do with that sand, puts another car, might put another carload on that. And being, I was, I was head of CP's business development for the U.S. side. I have connections in the East that I know these people. I know the people who use rock in Pennsylvania. I know the people who use rock in Iowa, where I think we can get, we can go with some of this stuff. There's other people that can use the sand that's out of there. So there's always all this kind of churn underneath that's going on. And we do want to add freight to the line. And we can we can operate freight and passenger over the line. It's not they're not mutually exclusive. So I have a question, and hopefully uh, it comes out right. It's going to be kind of straightforward. But um, will your proposal or will your tell us when Warren County taxpayers will not be on the hook for the operating of this railroad? Will your proposal provide for that? Will your business plan provide for that? Yes. So it's have not subsidized by the taxpayers. It's not becoming a burden to um, our plan. Our plan. Uh, maybe we didn't quite ex say it out loud in that plan. Our plan is to take over the burden from the from the taxpayers and to operate. And our plan is also to give back to the counties and the town. Or give, give them a return. Give you a return on your investment. Supervisor Hogan. I think we need to hear from our neighbors to the south, and I'm not sure if that should happen in executive session or in open session. Well, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Right. I, I so think I, and we still have people on the committee that want to speak at this point. I'm not so comfortable. Well, I, right now my vote would be to not proceed until we've heard from, from Corinne. Supervisor McGowan? Uh, yeah, my the question is, I, I, I like the idea of, of bringing the tailings down. My concern is the, uh, you know, the the, uh, the class of our track, um, and from what I have heard, is that the tailings are heavy. Right. And so we, you know, how much weight, I mean, if, if they can only fill up those cars three quarters of the way, and they have to go to Iowa or Pennsylvania. Does it does it make it feasible to do that? And and these are kind of my concerns of why it hasn't already started and they're taking it out in trucks. They have they have uh, looked into taking rock into Pennsylvania, and the rock does qualify on, at the on the face of it for that. Yes, the rock is heavy. Um, 
but the uses the uses that you have it may may demand the higher price of getting it there. So if it's, a, if it's a higher quality rock that can be sourced in Pennsylvania or Iowa, it may it, you may be able to get enough money for it that it'll cover the freight rate. And one of, one of the other issues about freight rates is that every time you change hands from the rail industry, every time you go from, say, from an operator on a branch to Canadian Pacific, from Canadian Pacific to the Norfolk Southern, from Norfolk Southern to Burlington Northern, you add, you're adding cost into that move. You want to you want to be able to to move it as far as you can with one carrier or two carriers, and that would should reduce the the, the cost there as well. Um, is it going to happen overnight? I can't I can't tell you today that it, tomorrow I, I could be moving freight there, but I do know that I can be moving freight on that line. Or maybe it's more freight inbound. Like I said, maybe it's American Rock Salt. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's Superior Gas wants to put some propane on. Everybody's using propane right now is like, no pun intended, on fire. There's just so much of it around, and um, it's one of those things where they they have propane transloads where every where every time you turn around they got a transload going on. There's two in the heart of Albany. There's one in the heart of Geneva. There's one on there's one on the um, Vermont Railway over in um, just across the border. These are these are things that pro provide people low cost options for their for their fuel and if you're not you know you say well well you're moving propane propane is pretty benevolent in the real industry. Supervisor Hogan How, if I may um, why were none of these in your proposal? They were always in the back of my mind I just didn't I I didn't want to, at the time, I didn't want to give my competition all their ideas about where, where they could be going. They were focused on taking that rock to Long Island, and I knew that was dead. And I'm not going to give my opposition, or I'm not going to give my, my opposition ideas of what they can do. Now, have I talked to the mine owner about this stuff? I, yeah, I have. I've worked with them, you know, uh, met with them a couple of times and brainstormed ideas of where we could be moving this stuff. Supervisor Lowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a, a couple of things I agree with Supervisor Hogan that we should allow Saratoga County and Corinth, uh, rather, to actually participate equally in this discussion. Uh, I'm in support of the motion. Uh, what I would like to say is, with regard to the motion, is that we don't have too many options to consider here. There's one option of using the railroad. And there's another option of not using the railroad. I've already uh, made my statement that we sh we need to put a folder together to our as to our costs, <coughs> timeline, and all the different faction factors related to the option of not using the railroad. So let me now concentrate on using the railroad. Uh, and excuse excuse this expression. I have if it's not draining the coffers of the taxpayers. And there's a possibility of, even a slim possibility, of using the railroads and having that being successful. Uh, the expression I wanted, I have no problem with letting them play with this asset. As long as we do our other part of nailing down all the issues associated with not using the railroad so that we don't have to keep going through this discussion. You do that. We have this asset. We're not draining the taxpayers' uh, pocketbooks. Let them go. Let them uh, see if they can do it. They think they can do it. Uh, and I believe, you believe you can do it. So I would say, when it comes time to vote, that I will support that motion. Supervisor McGowan? Uh, yes, the other thing, are, are you uh, willing to work with other recreational uh, type users uh, on your track, like we have a thousand acres that has come in uh, with a proposal that you know said they want to bring in the uh, the Christmas train. I mean, would you uh, set up? Would you be able to? You know, like I said, to use. I mean, I imagine in any business uh, plan that you'd use any viable 
way to make money. But the, you know, there's uh, like I said, a thousand acres. If if they had something to come up, I mean, obviously they either have to pay to use your line, or uh, I, I think the Christmas train was quite a big thing that they really kind of pushed us to get it in for the Christmas. The an the answer is it's absolutely. We're, you know, any use of that line that helps bring bring revenue to that line helps to support that line. We're gonna we're gonna work with you. We're gonna uh, you know talk to anybody who wants. To. You know, I don't. I, we would we would operate. We would want to operate the Christmas train. We have our own Christmas train, which actually predates the um, Polar Express. We have, you know, we there's there's Thomas the Tank Train, which was a huge a huge event up in North Creek. There's that. There's um, there's actually Thomas the Tank Train theme parks out there now, which is an idea that, that you know you could put someplace. There's there's um, the um, Hogwarts Express, which is a which is another with you know type uh, specialty train. We're talking about dinner trains. We're talking about ski trains. Yeah, I mean, you know this is all stuff too. I I know you you've all heard it before, but we're willing to work with it. We're willing to talk to people. We've worked. We've uh, been in touch with the Revolution Rail. Those folks up there, they're great operators, and I have no problem working with them jointly to expand their operations to other parts of the railroad where they can where they can get out on the line and they're just a super couple of guys very good guys so yes we are very willing to work so resident brad did you have follow-up uh yes thank you mr and and also uh with the uh, the sanford line are you in any form of negotiations on controlling that or taking that over from uh the owners or we didn't want we didn't want to go there yet with the owners we have we actually did talk to them at the end of last year we had talked to them while they were in that uh, exclusivity period with with uh, our competition but uh, we are we are talking we understand it and you know whether we own it or whether we lease it or however the financial thing takes you know takes shape we we are interested in the line Roger Diamond yeah, just a quick question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's relative to, I think, a comment that I heard. It costs us three hundred thousand dollars a year to three to five hundred to to manage to maintain the rail. Yes, without maintain. any bridge replacements, any <coughs> because I looked in the budget yesterday and I spoke with uh, Kevin. The only thing I could find was eighty-seven thousand dollars. Where's the three hundred thousand in the budget? Three hundred thousand dollars is 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 if we're doing the maintenance on the track. As I said yesterday when we talked on the phone, all that is being borne by any of our operators right now. Okay. If we were to do the maintenance, then that's probably what it would cost us a year. So it's not in the budget as we speak? We don't budget that money because the operators have always done it. Okay. Supervisor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this, you sound very credible to me. Uh, whether this is a viable project or not, I'm not convinced yet. But motion on the floor is to go into uh, negotiations with them, uh, serious negotiations. And from my business experience, you know, as I listen to you, you said, well, someone said, why isn't that in your RFP or whatever your proposal? Well, to be quite frank, you do well give your competitors to know your game plan and your strategy and so forth. That makes total sense to me also. Um, I, I, my gut tells me, I would support that motion, you know, although I don't have a vote on this committee, <laughs> but I would support the motion at least to sit down in the executive and, and go forward with the discussion with them uh, in a serious manner. And I think the road will hit the road real quick when we, when, we, when we get to some numbers. You may say, hey, this isn't viable, or you, you, may, you may say, <coughs> we made our contacts in Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. We do see a viable option now financially to to Boston. Uh, but it will come to fruition fairly quickly. So I, I don't see a, the downside in sitting down and talking to them. Uh, and I, I think this will speed up the whole process. We'll even know very quickly whether they think it's viable or we think it's viable. So that's my question. Supervisor Hogan. I would just like to say once more that I think without us speaking directly with, with Corinth, we are premature in, in entering into any conversation. Supervisor Lucia? Yeah, 
I'm not going to vote. <laughs> I just want to say to Supervisor McGowan's uh, statement about the thousand acres. Uh, you know, Court supports all these smaller excursions and stuff. I had a family stop in my office yesterday asking me if Court would support the thousand acre experience. If, if, you know, we got through. So apparently they've heard about it or been up there or something. And, uh, looking forward to using that. Well, there's also a sitting bull up there that has been sitting idle. Um, you know, there, there's a uh, there's a lot up in in that neck of the woods, and and and. Uh, do you know your way there? Yeah, yeah, I do know my way there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Kelly, just to add to it, as Steve had mentioned, we have been talking with Revolution Rail. I mentioned that the other day. But they were here in the meeting. Uh, I'm also going to let you know that uh, people from, from the new branch, uh, our president and vice president have actually met with them. Besides Steve meeting with them, I've had several phone call calls. And what I alluded, I think at the last meeting, I said based on my reputation and years of doing good quality economic development and creating jobs, I don't know of anything for the southern Adirondack region that is going to create good quality, meaningful jobs, but if for this particular project. People come up to me and tell me they have an idea and things of that sort, that's that's fine. But all these things of doing work along the way, we met with the uh, manager of Core Mountain here two weeks ago, and he runs a business privately out of Thurman, providing excursions and things of that sort. Those are the kinds of jobs that we get created as a result of this process. And I have some ideas of using micro-enterprise loans to assist the small businesses along the way. If a rafting company needs four rafts at the beginning of the season, you know, maybe the, the rail company can, they can, uh, they can, they can, they can be responsible. Uh, there are several models that have been done in other parts of the country. And uh, it's just a matter of molding this piece of clay and uh, continuing to work closely. Um, and as it relates, uh, Supervisor Hogan, to your comments, I, I totally support having Corinth uh, participate. Uh, but on the other hand, I said at the last meeting, we met with them on full board on three separate occasions, provided them full copies of this document. So they're all pretty much up to speed to be able to discuss. And uh, we're going to work with both of you. So we have a motion, Mr. Supervisor. One more question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will we invite members of Community Corinth to sit in on our negotiations? Simply, I ask that question is because it talks about track lease revenue sharing. A portion of it is shared with Corinth. A portion of it would be shared with Warren County. The, my initial question today was, where is that cutoff point and when is that determined? Well. I think that's something we need to talk about or include Corinth, and so we're, we are on an agreement on how this revenue sharing would occur. That would be my thought. I'd like to hear more about your economic development plan, plan over on the old uh, site in Corinth. I'd like to hear where that status is because that's important to Warren County also. We would like to see Corinth and Saratoga County grow and create jobs. Everybody benefits from that. But my thought is there's no harm in going forward with an our with the discussions um, with a memorandum of understanding on sitting down and, and working through the details but do we have to go should we include Corinth into that discussions so we know where everybody stands during that process I'll second that <laughs> with the idea that you know once the negotiations are completed we come out but it still has to be approved by your board, this this board here, and the full board. The idea is simply to sit down, go through contents of the RP, and see what we can work out. That's all. No commitments, but we're, we went through this process here. Okay. We're giving them a chance to sit down and negotiate uh, some sort of agreement. Mr. Wild, Mr. Chairman, um, procedurally wise, I think. Um, I'd, I'd like to withdraw my motion temporarily. Um, 
I, I believe um, the, some things have come to my attention that I, th I think we need to have a frank discussion about the proposal, um, where we're going, um, what the what the goals are, and um, I'd like to see if we could possibly have that frank discussion now in executive session. So, Supervisor Dickinson seconded your motion. Are you? He's withdrawing. Are you? Uh, I would. I would remake the motion. Well, you have to re. You have to withdraw the motion before you can make a new motion. All right. Well, I withdraw you have to agree. Second, and I make the motion. What is your motion that you're making? To sit down with the railroad company and uh, try to hash this out. I think that's where we are, and I definitely think that the gang from Corinth should be there. In. Uh, in, in, deference, in, in deference to Supervisor Dickinson, um, timing, timing issues. Uh, <laughs> there's questions about the uh, capital improvements and the maintenance required on the track. Uh, I'll second that motion. Time. That's going to take time to figure out, right? You, Mr. Davidson, could you clarify your motion that you made? Um, I had almost sounded like the first motion that Supervisor Wild made. You wanted to negotiate yes, with? It is, yeah. I okay. think the same time has come to sit down with us and negotiate. And Supervisor Wild, uh, Loeb seconded it. Okay. So, any discussion on the new, the current motion? Supervisor Hogan. I'll just state one more time. I would like to have. I think we would benefit from a conversation with Corinth prior to entering into negotiations. Supervisor Leggett. Thank you. Didn't hear the motion. Could you repeat? Motion was to sit down and negotiate with um, United Rail. And Corinth. And Corinth. Including Corinth. Yes, and Corinth. Yeah, the only question, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, did you get your question answered, Craig? Yes. Okay. Is, is Supervisor Diamond. That would it make sense to just appoint committee to make that to do that negotiations I have no interest in it but it seemed to help the process forward when we went through awarding the uh, RFP on, on the, or sitting down discussing the terms of the agreement on the airport maybe there's people here that sit on this committee that would like to participate in that activity I don't have any interest but having 20 of us or 10 of us sitting here and trying to pound out a contract is going to be challenging or if not difficult we do have uh, I've, we've discussed with the chairman of the board and the administrator about uh, setting up a uh, okay. committee to do to follow the same process as the airport okay. supervisor McGowan I I, I have to um, agree with the uh, supervisor Hogan here that I really would like why can't they come and I mean, do we have to have that in an executive session, or can they come in and talk? I, I'd like to hear, you know, um, Ben talking. I, I know they're here, but uh, excuse me. I don't think we should go in and negotiate in a contract until we hear what they feel. Uh, who's they? You mean Crit? I think they're going to be Crit. Crit, yeah. yeah. I think Sir so Yeah. Did you want to speak to that? Yeah, I mean, we definitely um, are looking to get, get an operator for the line, uh, one that will do the local uh, types of things that you talked about, and, and we're interested in the freight. Certainly are looking forward to relieving the taxpayers of uh, the expenses that we've got now. Uh, we're in the process of uh, rebuilding a depot had uh, there, there's trails being being made uh, to the local uh, reservoir up there and we're working with Saratoga plan for the trail that's going to come to this depot station we're working on another one to go from there either downtown or down to the, to the beach you know it's all going to come together as, uh, and we're very interested in, in working with Warren County and uh, United Rail. Uh, Supervisor Loeb had to Thank you, Chairman. So the, the motion includes no, no, he had having Corinth at the table. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. It so, did. So that's, so that's solid there. Uh, as I, since I second him, I'm in support of the motion. But 
then let's start the conversation. And there are some things I want to talk about in the executive session. Okay. Well, we can only have one motion on the floor right. at a time. Right. So we got so this motion. Let's vote. So I'm going to, yeah. Let's just I'm going to call the question. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion on the floor to sit down with Corinth and negotiate with United Rail. Aye. Aye. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Andrea? Motion carries. Can I be an undecided? <laughs> no, I, I think if, as long as Corinth is there, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see this move forward. Okay, so did you, you talked about it. Um, no. Did you want to do anything else today on this? Are we? I would like to go into executive session to discuss some issue that I have with the whole, with their, well, so. Uh, so to go into the executive session, I just want to clarify what we would be going into. It would be the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property, item H under the subsection of 105. Proposed acquisition of securities or sale or exchange of securities held by the such public body, but only when publicly would substantially affect the value thereof. Is that correct? And also um, a matter leading to the appointment of a corporation. About the discussion of a private discussion or discussion of the private financial <coughs> that is financial yeah. yeah yeah so we have a motion seconded by supervisor wild all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed carried okay, okay. made an executive session um, and at this point um, I'm going to uh, name off a negotiating team that we had prepared it's going to be uh, Supervisor Garrity, Hogan, Bramer, Moore, Administrator Moore, Kevin Ajos and whoever Corinth do you want to do it Supervisor Lucia or do you want Ed? Can I have to I'm, I'm okay with two. Okay, because most, most of my board work in the daytime. Okay. So at one, you know, you want to come with me today, but you have to take a day off. Okay. You have to do that, so. Um, can it look like an, an off or do you want to? Yeah, no, that's fine. The, the two okay, from. Because I, I have a meeting Thursday night. I mean, I can see if I can get somebody. I don't, do you always meet on this particular day? Or no, you, this is a special. This is a special meeting. And I think the committee will have to. Uh, yeah, I would certainly. Okay. And uh, Supervisor Wild. I didn't have my hand up. You didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Another appointment. You you you're on the negotiating team. So, is there any further business? <laughs> can can we start this by tomorrow? We we're gonna have we'll have a meeting with the team first, and then we'll get back in touch with United. Um, I'm always on. Yes, you, you will be there. Yeah, staff. There'll be also staff that will, you know, Mary will be involved in this. There'll be legal questions. And if Kevin needs Tim there, so any uh, anything further before the uh, committee? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Yeah. 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 Yeah.